Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Palmer of Sports Test, and yes, that is me on the bike doing one of my own tests. This week, I want to talk to you about the numbers and what they mean to you. So, if you're one of my previous clients, hopefully this will help you understand the values that you've seen from your tests in the past. However, if you're thinking about coming in for a test or want to know what we do, this will fully explain to you your metabolic profile. So what I'm showing you here is uh, an example of a metabolic profile that um, was produced. Actually, this case here was by um, an elite uh, road rider and a, a national cyclocross rider. Um, the examples I'm going to go through this evening are really based on a bike profile, but the run profile would be very, very similar. So if we look at the power profile of the, run, uh, of the bike test that we do, each rider would start off by looking at the blue bars at the bottom. We'd start off with a set workload which gradually increases over four minutes. We would then ride them at a steady workload for five minutes. The workload would then increase for a further minute and then we'd ride them for a steady, uh, steady workload for a further five minutes. They have a five minute break and then we undertake the ramp test where we increase the workload at 20 watts a minute until fatigue. Now these workloads are chosen according to each rider's fitness and likewise with the run test, the running speeds are, are chosen according to the runner's fitness. The crucial part of testing, however, is to monitor the breathing responses. So what I've highlighted here is the oxygen uptake. A term that we use for VO2 stands for volume of oxygen being used. And essentially if we think about it, about 21% of the air around you is oxygen. That gets breathed into the lungs. From that, the oxygen gets absorbed into the blood. The blood is then carried to the working muscle and the muscle uses that oxygen to combust with your fuel that's available to produce power. The more power you produce, the faster you go forward. And so what we see from there is we see that if we look at the oxygen profile, the oxygen profile increases, levels off, increases and levels off again. And then again in the max test, we see the nice linear increase in the oxygen uptake. So your oxygen uptake pretty much maps directly to the power output that you're producing. What we then have to consider is we have to look at the carbon dioxide production. Now effectively your carbon dioxide is your waste gas. And the amount of carbon dioxide that you produce primarily depends on the type of fuel that you're burning. And we'll come on to that uh, in a few minutes. Um, so whilst there's a direct relationship with your oxygen uptake and your workload, there isn't a direct relationship with your carbon dioxide production and your workload. Your carbon dioxide production is based solely on the fuels that you're burning. I'm also showing here um, on this graph, because this is what most of our riders get as standard, um, a, a total ventilation, which is the volume of air shifted in and out of the lungs in the period of a minute. So you can see for this rider here, they're shifting towards the end of the max test, around about 170, maybe even 180 litres of air every minute. And on this graph, which is unique to the, the set of results that our riders would normally get, I've also put a heart rate profile on here as well, and that will become apparent why that's important later on. So crucially, I was talking about fuel use. And the relationship between oxygen uptake, which is the blue line, and carbon dioxide production, which is the red line, will tell us what fuels the athlete is burning. Whilst we've got oxygen above the carbon dioxide, as I've highlighted in these two points here, the athlete is burning both fat and carbohydrate as a fuel. The amount of fat is dependent on the gap between those two lines. So the bigger the gap is between those two lines, the more space there is between your oxygen and the carbon dioxide, the greater the amount of fat that is being burnt as a fuel. Now we know that because of the chemical composition of fat and the chemical composition of carbohydrate and how that then relates to your oxygen uptake and your carbon dioxide production. What we want to see from a repeat test ideally is actually a bigger gap between those lines where an athlete has been working on improving their endurance. The other factor that we look at through the testing is we look at how efficient or how economical an athlete is. And that is seen by the amount of oxygen that is being used for a given power output. So for the same power output, 
if an athlete is coming back and using less oxygen from the same power output, that shows their efficiency and economy has improved, and that's obviously a good response as well. So those are things that we try and look at for follow-up testing. Then we move to the next portion of the graph, and we can see here that the red line, the carbon dioxide, is at the same point now as the blue line, the oxygen uptake, and I've highlighted that in the two different places. Now, with, when this occurs, we know that the um, amount of fuel that's being used is 100% carbohydrate. So that's crucial for the amount um, of, of time that an athlete could keep exercising for uh, before running out of carbohydrate supply or you know, um, becoming limited. So essentially what I'm trying to say here is that your exercise ability is limited by the amount of carbohydrate that you have available because you're only burning carbohydrate. Now if we move to the next point, and we can quite clearly see this on the right hand side of the graph, the red line, the carbon dioxide, is significantly higher than the blue line, the oxygen uptake. But we can also see that in the acceleration from the lower intensity to the higher intensity on the submaximal test on the left hand side, where carbon dioxide is above oxygen, the athlete is working what we term anaerobically. They are burning solely carbohydrate, and they're burning it very, very rapidly. So I often use the analogy of a car. That would be where the turbocharger kicked into the car, and the athlete is burning through their fuel very, very quickly. This gives a very, very limited ability to perform. So an athlete in this situation may only be able to perform um, for a very short number of minutes. Again, what we're going to look at later on is that the gap between the red and the blue line or the distance between the AT line, which I'll explain later on, and the end of the test determines for me the athlete's anaerobic tolerance and anaerobic capacity. And this is very, very important in high intensity sport. So particularly when we're looking at an athlete that's a cyclist, for instance, who maybe is a crit racer, a cyclist who is a mountain biker, um, or, or a cyclist that is doing uh, cyclocross, you know, the ability to tolerate high amounts of lactate can be crucial. The balance point between the athlete being aerobic and anaerobic is what's often called a threshold point. So at this threshold point, as we mentioned before, the athlete has just left the point where there's 100% carbohydrate burning going on to the point that they're actually burning through that 100% carbohydrate now much, much more rapidly. And in this case, the carbon dioxide production really starts to increase much faster than the oxygen uptake. So essentially, the athlete is slightly hyperventilating and trying to force out excess carbon dioxide to try and pull more oxygen in. Beyond this threshold point, the athlete really can't maintain the anaerobic workload for very long. So in the case that we're looking at here, this is an extremely good situation of a very, very highly trained athlete. What most of the athletes that come to see me would try and achieve, uh, and certainly the athletes that are looking for improvements in endurance benefits, is that if we can shift that threshold point to the right, with the same starting workload, we can increase the amount of power that they can produce at threshold or before they go to threshold. This ultimately increases their endurance capacity. So with a bigger endurance base, you increase your threshold power output and ultimately you also increase your peak power output. Now mentioning peak power output, the other thing that we actually look at is obviously VO2 max, maximal oxygen uptake. Now VO2 max is considered to be one of the key markers of cardiovascular endurance. In the test here, as you can see, the athlete is just over about 5.2 litres. Um, this is for an athlete that was about 65 kilos. So again, you can do the maths and you work backwards. You can see the total literage, you divide that by the athlete's body weight, and that gives you a VO2 max that's relative to the body weight. So the higher that value is, the better off the athlete is. Typically, for an adult male, of 25 to 45 we'd say 35 to 45 mils was man in the street 45 to 55 was somebody with a base of training 55 to 65 is a highly trained athlete 65 to 75 very highly trained and 75 and above and a top elite athlete now when i'm saying elite that's world-class elite so it gives us then an overview of the athlete looking at different factors and realistically what we would say is the complete metabolic profile gives a far better test than something like a single point FTP test because what we're actually doing is we're identifying 
strengths and weaknesses across the board. We're looking at endurance, we're looking at threshold, we're looking at peak, we're looking at recovery. With the endurance, and we can break that down, see how much fat burn is going on, how efficient the athlete is, and again, at that point, how economical the athlete is at both endurance base and the threshold point. So really the test, as we do it with the athlete on their own bike, gives a much, much better indication of how you can actually cope with performance. So the 30 minute testing within the two to two and a half hour appointment gives us your VO2 max and your heart rate max. We'll also look at peak power output and power to weight ratio measurements, which help with power output obviously for sprinting and power to weight for sprinting and climbing. We look at determination of threshold. We look at fuel utilization with your rate of fuel burning and different fat burning zones for you. We look at submaximal efficiency clearly can now scientifically determine the training zones and we can also look at recovery rates. We'll then use these results to provide us to give you an individual tutorial on training program design, what you need. We then help to plan with different training phases specific to your need to help you meet your performance goals and we put together a training week specific to your fitness levels, your competitive goals, training availability and commitments. And of course, you have the opportunity to ask any training queries you may have. Hope this has proved useful. Apologies is a bit longer than normal, but really I hope I've got some key information across to you, which is a benefit to the guys that have come before, so again, they can review their test numbers, or if you're thinking about coming to see us, which we hope you do. Thanks for your time.